Hey, Chrissy, I'm so excited that you're here on the Sarah Hall Show today. And we've been planning this for a little while and talking about um, some really juicy things for female entrepreneurs. So I'm really excited to talk about it on the podcast today. And first, I just want you to introduce yourself for the listeners and viewers. Um, Just give them a little detail on who you are and why you became an entrepreneur. Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Sarah. I'm so excited about this. I am Chrissy Williams. I'm a functional women's health dietitian. And so I've been in RD since 2010, but I actually, you know, I was kind of climbing the corporate ladder for a little while. Um, and I thought that's what I really wanted to do with my life until I think like other women, I had kids and my life completely changed. And I actually went through my own postpartum functional health journey. Um, long story short, I had a lot of like lots of chronic fatigue, lots of brain fog, low mood. And everyone thought just because like I looked good on the outside, like totally fine that I was normal. And everyone's like, this is just like your normal postpartum like transition. And I was like, that's a hundred percent not true. Um, So I dig deeper and realized like, no, there's such a bigger realm in the functional women's health space that I, so many, even as a dietitian, I don't know. I didn't know back then. And so I got into that. And now I built my private practice, literally being the help that I wish I had when I was going through postpartum. Um, And I also know it's not just postpartum women. It's like just women in like, you know, twenties, thirties, forties who have been through like stress and anxiety and like overworking hustle culture, all of that. So yeah, that's why I built my private practice. Yeah. I love it. So I want to ask something because I, I can guarantee you there's lots of people that our entrepreneurs, as well as non-entrepreneurs that follow me, listen to my podcast, the word functional women's health, the words functional nutrition, even for me being a dietitian of 17 years, I really didn't even hear that word until about four years ago when I started working in the business space with women just like you, because I became an RD in 2006 and it just wasn't a thing. You know what I mean? And right. I feel like more and more, um, and I don't know if COVID heightened it or what, but there's just more and more out there about the functional space. So I would like to just give the viewers and listeners, like, what is that? What does that mean, functional women's health? Sure. So functional, and I agree, it's like a, it's like a catchphrase, I think, these days. Like, so you hear it everywhere, like, but functional or holistic or integrative health practitioners, the the point of that is really taking more of a functional root approach, like like root. What are the root causes to your issues? Um, and you know, I am an RD, so I am yeah. all about evidence based and science and conventional medicine. But you know, because um, I think you were in the clinical, you're in the clinical realm. Is like what we did was more like, okay, here's the issue, and here's what we need to do to like combat or you know, how do we mm-hmm. fix that issue? Whereas a functional approach is really utilizing like specific nutrients and um, specific 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 foods and lifestyle habits to like prevent all of that stuff, like the bad stuff from happening, the chronic disease and hormone imbalances and all of that. So we really get to the nitty gritty of like, okay, well maybe you need more copper, you know, for minerals, maybe you need more vitamin B for energy, you know, kind of stuff like that to from the inside out, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, because I feel like, you know, and I'm going to have a separate episode going through, like, because I recently got diagnosed with hypothyroidism, and I told you about it, and then we were talking mm-hmm. about the whole luteal phase and cycle syncing, and we're going to get into that, and I think the listeners are going to, like, be really intrigued by it. I started studying it, like, you know, two years ago, but I'm just, like, very basic, you know what I mean? Like, I'm an old school, 2006 yes. <laughs> graduated RD. I've just been self-educating. So, like, when you started to get over into the functional side how did you learn? Like, what were some things that you did to learn about how you can impact your clients and go deeper with them? Yes, because I agree. I mean, I was an RD since 2013. You definitely have more experience than me. But same thing, right? We're taught more of like evidence-based conventional side. Yeah. Um, so then when I went through postpartum and like, you know, my doctors and everything were like, oh, you know, you lost the baby weight. You're fine. I'm like, you, you know, whatever. This is just your new normal. I'm like, no. Um, I started digging deep into, you know, initially looking like the Google trend, right? And then started seeing, okay, what is this functional medicine? What's this women's health things? And then I started actually shadowing different um, functional medicine practitioners and actually dove into my own, like invested into a functional dietitian focused program. Um, And from then I'm just like really connected with a lot of functional, um, uh, other functional dietitians. And we kind of all like share like, you know, 
brainstorm and like go through the same like research and we share like different um, articles and it's something that I'm definitely continuing to learn even myself like because to your point we don't really learn this stuff so yeah. it's it takes a long time but I think I'm, I'm like l- a lot more comfortable I am now than I was like back when I was postpartum so <laughs> well I think it's like business if someone stops learning you know it's like the death yes. of you you know what I mean like mm-hmm. We should always be learning no matter what. Even in marriage, I'm like, you know, I've made it 22 <laughs> years with my husband and every year it's like something new learning, you know? Um, For sure. So what do we say? You can you can teach an old dog new tricks. <laughs> yes, yes. I, I actually love that, yes. So with your clients, and I don't even care if we use me as an example. If I came to you, so let's just pretend I'm one of your clients because I want to really show, especially there is a lot of entrepreneurs that listen to this and I'm like, to me, entrepreneurs are probably the ones in most need of like functional help because, you know, I went through this phase where I worked 7.30 to 4, you know, the kids were much smaller then, and I would drink five or six cups of some Coffee. sort of caffeine mm-hmm. a day, not even thinking. And, and you know, I abused my body from age 14 to 30 with excessive exercise and, you know, have a baby and want to drop the baby weight so fast. And I feel like even as a dietitian, and there's a lot of entrepreneurs and people that follow me that aren't dietitians and they don't know this side of it. I just feel like what I did from 14 to 30 has caused what I'm going through at 40, you know? And so say, for example, you have a client that comes to you, 30 years old, couple kids, entrepreneur, or maybe just a career woman, like real estate agent or something like that. And her doctor says, you know, oh, you're just tired. Like, let's just do a basic lab panel on you, right? Because that's what happened to me. Basic lab panel. Um, so, and then they say, oh, well, you you have hypothyroidism. You know, take this pill, do this. Yeah. There's more, right? And I'm, I'm intelligent enough as a dietitian to say, I'm going to go figure out what more is because this is not this is not going to solve my root of the problem, right? So, like, you take a client like that. Talk to us about, like, how you help your clients. Like, what's step one? How do you work through these things with them? Yes, that's a great question. And literally everything you described is literally, like, all the clients that come into my space. They're, like, 20s, 30s, really gone through, like, we're trying to do so many things, but we're also, like, chronically undernourishing and undereating. So, for, like... For you, an example, if you were one, if you were a new client coming into my world, I would say, okay, yeah, like I'll take a look and review all your basic blood work, but I want to look deeper. I want to know like what I want to do functional testing. So I want to look at what your cortisol and adrenal um, glands look like. And like, are you like overly active with like lots of cortisol or are you completely like totally burnt out and you're not making enough cortisol and that's why you don't have any more energy. Um, I want to look at like, what is your metabol, like what does your metabolism look like? Like how much are you actually eating right now? Um, are you eating enough for maintenance, like to keep your body to feel happy and safe and when, cause when you're eating well, you're most likely getting the nutrients you need. And like, you know, with hypothyroidism, a lot, we actually like, you know, not a lot of women talk about like, oh, may- maybe I've hypothyroid or whatever, but a lot of that is actually rooted from under eating, under yep. nourishing and working too hard, like getting that hu- hustle culture and not replenishing enough. And so I would want to do like a full thyroid panel. I want to see exactly like, I think conventional lab Uh, ranges are a little bit um, different. Like functional is a little bit more conservative in terms of like what's considered normal. Um, So I want to look at like the big picture. What do your hormones look like? Your progesterone, your estrogen, your testosterone. How does that all compare to exactly like what you're feeling? And from then we can actually get a lot more insight of do you need specific minerals? Because hormones are based off of proper mineral nourishment. And, you know, we can like People think that you can eat perfectly and healthy all day long, but minerals are actually like, you need strategy to get proper mineral intake for your thyroid, for happy hormones, for like better, like manageable cycles. Like if you're like on your deathbed for during PMS, like every single month, like that's a huge red flag that like, we need to get back to the basics again, root causes. And like, let's look at your minerals. Let's look at your vitamins. Let's like, are you having balanced blood sugar? Um, what are your cortisol levels look like? So I would do all that. And from there create like a personalized protocol for whatever we find. Yeah. And the point I want to make about this part is that 
you're not going to get that from just going to your doctor. How many times do you hear from women that come to you, oh, I'm just my doctor's, you know, my doctor's managing it. Right. No, your doctor is not managing it. And like, I, I wasn't so passionate about this until like, I started going through it where, you know, I had a Dutch test a few, probably like three years ago. And I did see my cortisol still being elevated at 230. I saw my melatonin being low. I saw B12 in the gutter. I saw magnesium yep. in the gutter. And at that point, that's when I started learning about birth control and hormones and all these things. And most of us have been on birth controls since, you know, some people younger than 18, right? Like 18 to 20 years old. And like, I don't think there's enough I don't know what your stance on birth control is, but I don't think there's enough out there telling women, like, what's the long-term implication of this? You know what I mean? And uh, so with the cycle thing, because, you know, I, anyone that follows me know I talk about this all the time, but I still don't feel as educated as I should be about your cycle and business and life and stress and hormone fluctuation and all this. And it's particularly, like, I call it the LP, the luteal, luteal phase or luteal phase, however you say it. I didn't even know what that was till two years ago. So do you want to talk a little bit about like cycle syncing and like what that is and what that can mean for women like that you work with or women maybe looking to work with you? Sure. Yeah. So cycle syncing in a nutshell is like our bodies as women, we have right a one month, about 28 to 30 day cycle. This is when we actually go through different phases and it actually correlates to our energy and our productivity. And we can actually strategically align as, as much as we can um, our workflow to like sync it with how where we are in our cycle. Um, do you want me to go through like the four? Yeah, because yeah. okay. I'm just like really <laughs> interested in it. And I know a lot of the women that follow me and watch the podcast or interested in it. Yeah, for sure. And when it comes to like, you know, again, like hustle culture or like trying to do all the things, it's not so much of like not doing things, but how can we strategically like time it and like align with it so that it doesn't feel so like forced. Um, and this is a big thing with my adrenal burnout clients. So yeah, I'll totally get into it. So the first phase, like your day one of your period is essentially like your menstrual phase. So that's typically what day one to five or one to seven. Um, so this is when you're actually like bleeding. Um, and this is when estrogen and progesterone drop and you're literally just, you know, shedding that uterine lining here. Your energy is more like in that rest phase. So it's more like taking it easy, going with the flow, um, your movement. If you like are into workouts, typically like this is when you do more gentle movement, restorative movement, yoga, walking, meditation. And when it comes to like entrepreneurs or just, you know, productivity wise, this is really when you can just like rest, but really um, do a lot of critical thinking. This is when like physically your body's like kind of slowing down, but your mind is like racing. Like this is when you're problem solving. This is when you can really deep into like, okay, what do I need to do? How do I fix it? What's our plan? Um, so that's menstrual. Then after um, we get to our follicular phase. So this is like when you start getting to like the glow up phase, I start to say, <laughs> this is like, yeah. After, yeah, right. Like this is after you, um, you're done with your period. You are like ready to go. You are, um, your energy is like really high. You're like maybe really motivated, um, for mo movement. This is when you have like higher intent. You can do higher intensity workouts because you actually have the physical energy to do it. You have the motivation to do it. Um, you can try new workouts because you're like a little bit more brave maybe to like do something out of your comfort zone. Um, and then productivity, this is when you get that creative juices flowing. This is when you can actually like strategize like, okay, here's my plan for the month. Or like, here's what I want to do on social media. Like, this is when you're really like on it. This is when you can, like I say to my entrepreneurs that I work with, like if you're on social media and you want to do reels, like do it in your follicular phase or your ovulation phase, which I'll get to next. So that's follicular phase of days eight to around eight to 14. Then you go to ovulation and, you know, this is when like the egg drops and we're like fertile. Um, but energy here is like really magnetic. So I say like, this is like your mag magnetic phase. This is when like everyone is typically like really like attracted to you. Like this is when you're most attractive, not even just like physically, but also just like your aura, like your vibe. Mm -hmm. um, this is like movement. You can do again, more higher intensity. Um, this is when you can like compete if you're like an athlete and you want to do like, this is when you're like 
in it and like your glory. Um, productivity wise, this is when, like I said, because you're so like magnetic and attractive, this is when like you can pitch an offer. This is when you can like present big to like big, you know, um, sh- presentations or podcasts. Um, this is when you can network with other people. How can you collaborate? Like this is when you like build those connections because everyone's like typically more drawn to you. So that's your ovulation phase days around 15, 15 to 20. Um, and then you go into your PMS. So like after that glow up, then it's like, okay, we're going to slow down a little bit and get <laughs> that's back to That's my least your, favorite Yeah, part. right. Like the luteal <laughs> phase. Like this is what you're talking about, right? Like yeah. this is day, around days 21 to 28. Eight, until like you get to your first day of your period again. So this is when progesterone dominates and estrogen and testosterone decline. Because of that shift, um, I'm not going to get too nitty gritty, but like that big shift is why we're experiencing more of those like PMS. Th- and that big shift is also why our energy gets like lower. Um, this is when we're more into that kind of like menstrual, like more getting into that flow. Um, you can like transition from bigger workouts to more like slower. Um, or a mixture of both. Um, you can productivity wise, this is when it's like really good to kind of go inward, uh, really doing more of like that solo work or admin work. Um, maybe reflecting on like how the month went or like how your presentations went. Like this is when it's time to really, um, hone in on like kind of being more of like the solo, the solo work that you want to do. Um, and then you're back to your menstrual phase. And then it's just like an ongoing every month cycle. Um, the thing about cycle thinking, I say this to everybody, is that it's not a perfect science. This is like, you know, naturally like what typically happens. Um, if your luteal phase is, like I said before, if it's like completely like you feel like you got hit by a Mack truck, like that's like, that's a problem. <laughs> that means your hormone hormones, there's a little bit, there's some kind of imbalance there. And if your hormones are imbalanced in any way, your cycle syncing is not going to be like working for you because you're not, you're not flowing through those phases as greatly as someone who has that balanced hormone health. Um, Yeah. So step one really would be someone becoming very self-aware, right? Because like years ago, I I didn't even, I didn't even know any of this, you know, like I, I didn't listen to my body. I just pushed through like a bulldozer, like just, Whatever, I got to do it. I'm working full time, got two kids. They got to be fed. They got to get a bath. And I got to do my business, right? I just bulldozed through the wall and I abused caffeine and I still was doing 90 minute crazy cardio workouts and just really shut my body down. But I I was not self-aware of anything. And so step one sounds like just being really self-aware. And I guess this might be a dumb question, but... If a woman doesn't have a period, how does this get affected? You know what I mean? Like if they're on birth control or they just don't have a period. Yes. Great question. Um, So I do have clients who have like IUD or or whatnot. So if they don't have a period, um, essentially you're not having that progesterone increase. Mm. So you're not going to really have that ovulation phase. So you're when it comes to cycle thinking, it's not going to be like the same as someone who doesn't have, who doesn't is just on their natural cycle. So it might, their energy might be completely. So this isn't really important to know about birth control is it can hit, it actually can prevent B vitamin absorption. And I'm not anti, you know, like you do you, if you love it. Um, but it's really important to know that Some women are like tired all the time when they're on birth control. And that's because birth control actually can inhibit B vitamin absorption. And you know, we need B vitamins for energy metabolism. So that's like one of the big things. So like, well, I'm tired all the time and I'm on birth control. So like, I should be feeling good, right? And it's like, well, no, because unfortunately, but birth, lots of birth control types and like lots of medications, like especially for anxiety, they do block that energy metabolism. So it really is common to be more tired to not have that like glow up phase yeah and you know I think anybody that's listening could tell that like they're not going to be able to figure this out on their own because there's way too many moving parts and 100 yes way too many moving parts and <laughs> it's way too individualized right like and your exactly. doctor your doctor's just gonna say like take this medicine do this like let's do your labs again in six months or something like that you know it's like get more sleep type things right and 
you know, that's just too basic for a woman that's struggling with what you're talking about. It's just way too basic. So the next step would be like seeking out, well, basically someone like you, right? So figuring out like, okay, this is where I'm at, but like, I need to go a step further. I just wish I could shake more people and say like, you need Chrissy or whoever, <laughs> you know, it may be, right? right? Because it's like, yes. why does everyone just take their doctors, like, just do this basic thing, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't understand it. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, I totally agree with you. And I, I, you know, we're, we're come from conventional medicine. So I, you know, I don't, I'm not anti-doctor either. Yeah. Like, I think like, if your doctor is going to prescribe you something like, yeah, their goal, like you have to think like their goal is to make you feel better in any way, like to help you, like, you know, what, whatever you need to do instantly, like we need to get you there. Right. So like, that's what they're taught. And I like, love that. Like, thank God for doctors. Um, but when it comes to like, on the flip side, they're actually like, they also are only going to wait until it's like flagged on like on their end, like on, on their blood work. But if someone like back to my postpartum, like I like felt terrible, but he said all of my stuff looked normal. And it wasn't until I like self advocated for myself mm-hmm. and was like, mm, let me just look because there's no way I'm going to accept this as normal. I looked into further. I found people like myself and I was like, hey, I just want a second opinion. I would love for you to take a look because the last thing I wanted was for me to have my blood work, like get it so bad where my blood work actually showed and for my doctor to be like, oh, okay, yeah, now it's bad enough. You need medication. But so to your point, women, we're so, we like lose being so in tune to ourselves. But if we can get that back, if you can be in tune with your body, be self-aware and realize like, no, I think something's off. And then like self-lead to get help on another perspective, like it could, it could change your life like before to prevent that downhill spiral. Yeah. Yeah. And I definitely believe in like an advanced care team, right? Like I love my doctor. She's a new doctor to me. Like I've never really I'm 40 and never really went to the doctor unless I had a sinus infection, something like that, you know? I went to my OBGYN and that was it. And I never saw a doctor. And so when I was researching primary care doctors, I had went into her when I was sick and I just asked her a few questions, just filling her out. And it really made me see, okay, like she's, she's not like some doctors that just slap you on a medicine and don't recommend further something, right? Like, And even with my recent thyroid diagnosis, she was very adamant, like, hey, if you want to, we can start the medicine, but we don't have to start the medicine, you know, because it's a subclinical hypothyroidism, which told me that it's obviously adrenal and hormone cycle related somehow. And so anyways, long story short, I believe in doctors as well. And I think that they are a starting point. I just think that more people should also like you did, self-advocate and go to the next point if they need to, because maybe the doctor isn't going to say, like, go see a functional provider. You know what I mean? So. Yes. I love it. How do you use cycle syncing for yourself? Do you do you think it's like, for me personally, it's two weeks where I'm like recording podcasts, doing reels, and then it's two weeks where like I'm, like you said, more like downtime. I might write some things out. I might plan some things, but like the creative juices, the confidence on camera, it's just not there at that point in the two weeks. But for me, two weeks it is. So is that kind of what I'm hearing is normal, right? Two weeks where you're pretty much through the follicular ovulation, stuff like that, and you're more energetic. Yes. So that's when I, I per se, as an entrepreneur, I will try my best to like schedule things around that time. Um, Mm -hmm. But of course, working with other people, it's not always ideal. Um, But for myself, if I can schedule like interviews or anything like during my follicular ovulation phase, I will 100% do that. Um, But when it comes to more of like, you know, this, the planning and like reflecting on programs and like clients that I will really try to hone in on that too. And like, okay, my, my luteal phase, I'll really get into like trying to do uh, okay, the blood work and the, the testing and all of that. Like when I'm like in the nitty gritty. So I, I do try, it's not always, a- you know, it's not always accurate. Like right now mm-hmm. I'm actually in my, um, luteal phase. Um, <laughs> I'm just starting my luteal phase, but at the same time, I also think you have to take it with a grain of salt. Like I'm actually, I was, I woke up like so excited for this podcast and you, I feel like 
if I looked at me, I would never know that I'm in my luteal phase. I wouldn't have known. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. So I'm actually in mine too. Like what the heck? We're We're on the same same (laughs) flow. Yeah. Um, But I also think at the same time, like if you do something that lights you up and, and and fortunately in my business, a lot of things light me up. So I, Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, I never really feel like, oh, I'm in like the dirt, like in the mud, like trug it, like trying to get through, like I, everything lights me up. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exciting. So a couple more things I know we've talked quite a bit and I really appreciate all your amazing knowledge because I think, man, there could just be like a series of four episodes about this. You know what I mean? Like, For sure. um, and I'm going to keep talking about it here on, on the podcast because like, I'm going to share my thyroid journey and stuff like that. Um, and the cycle syncing stuff, I think just people just need to find someone like you. And we'll put your stuff in the show notes too, so they can find you and apply for your program and stuff. But let's talk about struggles or at least one struggle you think you've had to overcome as an entrepreneur. Because I think so many people talk about the high points and the money and all these things, but I want to, I want to dig into like, okay, you had this problem, you had this struggle, but here's how you have overcome it or are working to overcome it. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, my, I mean, I've had a number of them, but I think my biggest one that I constantly still work on is imposter syndrome. I think that, so, I mean, so many entrepreneurs, I think, deal with that. But, I mean, I've been a dietitian for 10 years, and I still second-guess myself. And yeah. sometimes I'm like, like, who who am I to, like, talk about cycle syncing on a podcast, right? Like, who am I to do all these things? But at the same time, it's like, no, th- like, if this, like, for me, I'm, I don't know if you're into human design. I'm a generator. Um, so for me, it's like I if I respond, like if I get lit up by people asking me questions or my, my clients and seeing them go through their journey and like coming out on the other side, like feeling like a whole new woman, like that like just says, no, this is like literally what I meant to do. And I just have to keep, like you only learn from experience. Like there's no, there's not going to be a perfect time. So you just got to keep trucking, get the experience from your clients, and you're just going to get better and better and better. So yeah, I, I totally I try agree. to remind myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think if you give yourself permission that, um, in my opinion, you know, I've been a business owner for eight years now. I don't think, well, I think two things. Um, I think we have imposter syndrome in all areas of our life. Um, even in friendships, yes. if someone like doesn't talk to you or like one of your really good friends like cancels plans or whatever it's like well what's wrong with me why do they do that you know like it's always inward or in marriage or relationships like I I feel like you know or as a mom am I doing the right thing comes into our head all the time right and to me that's also imposter syndrome but I think it just became a known thing as entrepreneurs to talk about it but when you really look at it Uh, we have imposter syndrome in every part of our life. It's a matter of how do you look inward and manage that. And so I always say, you know what, embrace it because imposter syndrome doesn't go away. It just can be managed because I've been online for eight years, been a dietitian for 17, you know, been able to go from, you know, building a six figure business to a seven figure business. And I still sometimes say, Oh my God, am I doing the right thing? Or, Oh my God, who am I to talk about this? Like, I don't know. I just think there's this concept that imposter syndrome is going to go away. I, I don't right. think it I don't ever, think so. Yeah. No, no. Well, yeah, I, I think don't. we live in a world where it's like, you have to be perfect. Right. Yeah. And I, but like, no, there is messy action and you just get better and better. Yeah. 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 With practice. Confidence <laughs> comes with reps. <laughs> yes. A hundred percent. Yes. So what are you excited about for 2023 New Year? Um, what are you excited about in your life or your business that you want to share on the podcast today? Oh my gosh, yes. I I have a lot of things and I, I can't give too much away, but yeah. what I will say, 2022 was like my year of like scaling. And when we worked together, you definitely helped me do that. I got my time back. I like really like emphasize signature programs and I love you for that. I <laughs> It's been amazing. And then 2023, it's really my year of like really expanding, like expansion. And um, so now it's like, I actually have some like new offers coming. And I, what I think is, 
going to be, well, it's going to be completely new to all of my audience, but I've also never seen things like this have been done in a, any other functional women's health space. So I have a lot of innovation, a um, lot of things coming in the pipeline. So I, I say to everyone, buckle up because it's going to be <laughs> so good. Yeah. I love that. And that, that it, we're going to leave the podcast on that <laughs> note because it's like, uh, you're creating something that's different than anyone else is doing. And I think there's so much imitation that goes online that like people just start to look the same. Like, yes, yes. I've always been someone like, I don't want to look like anyone else. I want to be Sarah <laughs> Hall and, and you want to be Chrissy. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, so I love that. I'm really excited to see what you have coming. So you have to keep us updated. I will. Thank you so much for having me. This was so much fun. Thank you for being here. And I think everybody probably took notes on the cycle <laughs> syncing. And we will leave your information down in the show notes about how people can find you. Great. Thank you.